الحمد لله الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وحده لا شريك له يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله البشير النذير والسراج المنير وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين وعدهم الله بالمغفرة والأجر الكبير وسلم تسليما أما بعد Indeed our praises due to Allah the one who created death and created life in order to test you which of you will be most excellent in your deeds and he is the one who's almighty is able to get revenge against those who violate and he's the most forgiven for those who repent and return back to him in obedience i bear witness that there's no deity worthy of worship except allah he is one that doesn't have any partners the one who causes life and causes death and who has power over every single thing as i bear witness that muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his worshipper and his messenger. Sallallahu wa sallamuhu alayhi and the Bashir and the Nadir, the one who brings glad tidings of paradise for those who follow him and obey him, and a warning of the hellfire for those who disobey him and renegade against his guidance. And he is a lamp of guidance and a one who lights the path to success that we can walk upon in this life. May the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him and upon his family and his companions, those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised them forgiveness and a tremendous reward. And may Allah send, keep them upon safety and security. I mean, as for what follows, brothers and sisters in Islam, taqullah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the exalted, the one who's free from all forms of imperfections. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create you or create us without an objective and a purpose in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us without an objective and a purpose in the life and just left us haphazardly to do what we want. Nor did he leave us without an objective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for the worship of him alone and he's commanded us with tawheed with single him out alone through our actions and he commanded us with obedience to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you into existence in this abode that we live in and he's given you a lifespan and he subjugated for you the night and the day and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala supported you and helped you were giving you bounties <clears throat> <clears throat> and he subjugated for you that which is in the heavens and that which is in the earth all of it for the purpose of us using it to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala in order that we may use these things to be obedient to him subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ta'ala has sent to us messengers prophets and messengers one after the other He's revealed upon us his book to clarify for you and all of us that which is obligatory upon us and that which is prohibited. That which will benefit us and that which will cause us harm. And all of us are qadimun alayhi. We're going forward to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No way around it. We're going to meet with Allah wa ta'ala 
and we're going to see some horrors in the next life. We're going to see things that's going to be uncomprehensible when we was in this life. And the only protection we have is the choices we make now, brothers and sisters in this land. Choosing that which Allah command us to do by learning his deen and practicing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore we must prepare for what is in front of us. We must make this dunya be an abode for doing deeds, righteous deeds, and staying away from sins. And look at this earth as nothing but that. And look at all that which we earn from the halal. Its objective is to, its purpose is for us to use it for that. For this is what we must understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us these realities. That this lifespan that we're living in, this earth, this worldly life, what we call in the religion, dunya, it is a mamar, a place for passing through. That's it. It's a mamar. It's a place that's used for going forward, just doing deeds in it. It's not a place for permanency. And he has made the Jannah, the hereafter, the maqar, or muqir. It's the place where we're going to settle at and make it our final abode based on the choices we make now. So if you do not traverse, O slave of Allah, this life traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with righteous deeds, seeking through those righteous deeds to be a means to get you to his paradise, then know for sure you're going to be driven anyway to an abode. You're going to be driven anyway, O slave of Allah. And you're going to reach your end no matter what, whether you want to choose this pathway or you choose just to live you're going to come to an end in this dunya listen to the statement of Allah as Allah Ta'ala says فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي and they will, he will say the one who has died and the one who sees the reality of the next life he will say oh my lord if only you delay my lifespan إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ to a near appointed time. Give me just a little more time, in other words. If only you do that. For us, I will give a lot of charity. And I'll be from the people who do righteous deeds. But you know Allah's response to that. That Allah will never delay a soul. Allah will never delay a soul. When its appointed time has come. Wallahu khabirun bima ya'malun Allah is all knowing of everything that which they do So O son of Adam O daughter of Adam You are in this life And while you're living in this life Your life goes through changes And there's only three changes The state and condition that we go through in this life is only one of three brothers and sisters in this land. We only go through three stages in this life. The first stage is ni'am mutawaliya. Bounties that are continuously coming to us. That Allah to better what ta'ala bestow upon us. That you are in need, that are in need of showing gratitude to him for them. As shukr, gratitude to Allah. Showing it to him is based on four or three pillars showing gratitude to Allah for the bounties he's given us is the first state that we always all of us is in that are in need of gratitude to Allah and gratitude to Allah or shukran in Arabic has three pillars remember this number first pillar of gratitude to Allah hold on to these pillars because if you don't have them you're not showing gratitude to Allah to better go time Number one, al-i'tirafi bi ni'am Allahi batina. Acknowledging those bounties of Allah within yourself. Acknowledging them. Being witness to the bounties that Allah has given you. Inside of you. Not on the outside. Inside of you first and foremost. Second, foundation or pillar of gratitude. Al-tahadduf biha. Zahira. Speaking about those bounties publicly, openly. That's the second pillar of gratitude. So speaking about the bounties Allah has given you. Openly and publicly. 
Third pillar, tasrifuha, disposing of those bounties that Allah has given you, fi ta'ati, in obedience to the protector of that bounty, Allah, to the giver of that bounty, the mu'tiha, showing gratitude to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. These three things is the only way we can show gratefulness to Allah for what He's bestowed upon us. That the Messenger of Allah has established. That Allah has established in the Quran and the Messenger of Allah. We repeat those three things. Number one, i'tirafi biha batina. Acknowledging those bounties within your heart. Number two, attahadduz biha zahira. Speaking about those bounties openly and publicly, apparently towards to the creation. Thirdly, tasrifuha. Disposing of those bounties In obedience to the one who protects those bounties That he gave you from being taken from you The mu'tiha, the one who's given those bounties to you There are only three ways we can show gratitude Your gratitude to Allah can never be complete Except with these three pillars Nor will the bounties Allah give you stay And not go away and not disappear and stay established upon you Except With these, this form of Shukran Gratitude to Allah to better go to Allah. But that is our reality So that's the first state and condition We in the second state and condition That we always upon Is the condition Of what Occurs to one of us in this life Of mihin Of tests and trials Of ibtila'at Tests and trials from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That he choose to test with them His worshippers And those trials That Allah has put all of us in يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى sabr. It is in dire need of patience From us And we know sabr is on three levels Being patient is on three levels Number one, hindering yourself. Pay attention to this one. Hindering yourself from tasakhud bil maqdur, from being angry for what's been decreed from you. That's the first category of patience, how we deal with our trials that we, we go through in this life. Making yourself, making yourself not being angry for what Allah has decreed for you. And hindering your tongue from complaining about those trials that Allah has put you through in this life. Hindering your tongue from complaining in al khalq to the cre creation. Close your mouth. Complain to the only one who can resolve. No one else. Thirdly, Habsul A'da an Af'al al Jazar. Preventing your members of your body from doing actions of impatience, of hastiness. The ulama always mention latmul khadr. Scratching your face, ripping your clothes. That's not our culture. We don't do that in America. Our is cursing, fighting. Backbiting one another because I'm mad at them. Avoid all of these things. Hinder your limbs from doing the actions that show impatience with what Allah decreed you upon you. And patience revolve around these three things. If you can do these three things, hinder yourself from being angry with what's been decreed. Number one. Number two, hinder your tongue from complaining to the creation. Number three, hinder your limbs from doing things that show impatience and hastiness and bad behavior. But what's been decreed? If you can do that, then this state and condition that we cannot avoid of trials and tests that Allah put us through, we'll be successful in it. That's why Allah promises as an encouragement for us. He tells us for those who help observe this type of patience. He says, That 
those who are patient shall truly be given as a completely fulfilling reward, a reward that has no ending to it. Their reward for patience has no limit to its reward. It's unending. So this is an encouragement from Allah. To strive our best to observe these qualities of patience. That indeed, those who are patient, those who are patient, they are given a for fulfilling reward, he said, without any limits to that reward. Remind yourself of that when the patience is being tested. Understand that reality. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, He's not testing his slave or not testing any one of us who believes in him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to destroy us. He's not testing us for that reason. He's not putting you through your trial, your sickness, your disease, your impoverishedness, or your wealth being tested with the haram, whatever the case may be. He's not doing that test or putting us through that to destroy us. That's not the objective. That's not the goal from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's only putting us to a test to test our patience. Let's see if you're going to observe this patience and show so you can get that unending reward. He's only testing you for that reason. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's testing you for your ubudiyah to see your worship of him. If you're going to give him the worship in this arena. That's why he put us through the trial. You're going to do this for Allah? So if we are patient for that believer, that trial that he or she is going to, it becomes a minha, an actual bounty for him because of the reward that he's given. That's what it becomes for the believer. What's the hala to the and that trial automatically changes for him? Fihaqi in relation to that person, I'll tell you a gift from Allah. Allah, let me use myself as an example. I lost my wife to cancer, breast cancer. I watched my wife deteriorate from that disease. And Wallahi, that trial was a bounty upon me and my wife, both of us. It brought her closer to Allah. It made her be better with her children and her family, her companions. It made her be better towards me. It made me be better towards her and with my parents, with my children, with my family. It was a near no Wallahi. It wasn't a trial. But these type of people, it's the halat al il atiyah. These type of people, the trial turns into a gift and not a trial. Because guess what? It's going to happen anyway. You can't avoid what's decreed for you. As Ali said, which one of the two decrees of Allah will be angry about? The one that can't pass me or the one that will never reach me? Which one? It's going to happen anyway. Face it with this characteristic. Face it with these qualities. And remind yourself, That those who are patient will only be given a reward and fulfilling reward that has no limits to it, brothers and sisters in Islam. Understand that reality. So, O oh worshippers of Allah, those who are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Understand and know the reality. Shaitan is the one who's your enemy. And he has no authority over you to make you do these things. If you be sincere to Allah and your servitude to him. And that requires checking yourself and your intentions. That requires taking an assessment of yourself. That requires seeing your worthlessness without Allah being in your life with his legislation. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says... To shaitan. This type of believer, shaitan has no way to him. As Allah Ta'ala says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. Indeed, my worshippers, you have no authority over them whatsoever. That's what he told to shaitan. That's what he told to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, told to Iblis. And Allah Ta'ala says, Inna hu laysa lahu sultan ala ladina amanu. Verily, he has no authority or control over those who believe. And upon their Lord, they place their reliance. Upon their Lord, they place their reliance. Allah says his authority is only 
those who turn to him. And he turned to the things he invited to you, inviting you to of disobedience and sin. Turning to that. He only has authority over those people, Allah Ta'ala says. And those who associate partners with him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reality. The third state and condition that all of us is in is being tested with our own whims and desires. We all go through that. Being tested by our nafs, our desires. Being tested by shaitan. All of us. We all in these three states. None of us can avoid them. Not none of us are set. He's being put to test by his whims. What he coveting. It's not none of us except his own desires is calling him to something. It's not none of us except shaitan is pushing that desire and pushing him. For shaitan is the greatest enemy. He is the wolf to mankind and the enemy to him. And he only going to be able to assassinate you. He can only be triumphant against you when we heed this from the remembrance of Allah. That's the only time. And ask yourself, how often am I heedless of the remembrance of Allah? Because it's easy to be heedless today with social media and with these cell phones. It's easy to be heedless to Allah's remembrance and replacing it with TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, and whatever other social media out there. These are the only pathways that Shaitan has to us is through heedlessness from the remembrance of Allah and heedlessness upon his obedience and following your whims and desires. In the Quran, brothers, understand the character of the Quran. In the Quran, the word Hawa doesn't come in no place in the book of Allah except, which Hawa means whims and desires, it doesn't come in the Quran except in Sifatul Madmumah, in a blameworthy characteristic. So because of this, the Sahaba, whenever they had to make a decision of something and they would decide, they had choices of making a decision of something, and if they inclined towards something they desires, they didn't choose it. Because Allah mentions desires in a blameworthy way in his book. So they, they chose the other choices that wasn't connected to their desire. Apply that to everything. Success is granted for us when we do. Because that enemy of us, ours, cannot come to accept at his door. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, he has granted success and opened up for us the door of tawbah, tawbah repentance. If we do get caught up when we're in a state of heedlessness, in the, of the remembrance of Allah. Because remembrance of Allah is two types. Dhikrullahi nawan. The first type and most important one, remembering Allah when you're in front of some disobedience of Allah that you could commit and you desire. You remember Allah and read the sis. That's the greatest remembrance. The second remembrance is the legislative dhikr that we said from reciting the Quran and reciting various legislative remembrances of Allah for morning and evening. But the greatest dhikr, ma yahulu bainaka wa bayna ma'asi. That remembrance that comes between you and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So understand that, brothers and sisters in Islam, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened up the door of repentance. He's opened up the door of returning back to him. It's never closed for us. Not until your soul reach your throat is when it's too late. Or the sun rising in the west and you wasn't upon no obedience and repentance prior to that. It's the only time. Outside of that, the opportunity is there. You slip up. Tadakkar, remember, reflect. And then become of those who see things properly. The proper understanding of how the people of belief in Allah sees things. Repentance, returning back to Allah. That's the condition and that's the state for the one who repents to Allah with a sincere repentance to him. And he repents, Allah will show repentance upon him. And Allah will remove that person from that enemy of his and return his plot that he had against you on his neck. So know that whenever Allah wants for his slave anything that's good, 
he always opened the door of repentance for that slave. If the door of repentance is closed for you when you upon some wrongness, brothers, know that Allah has left you to yourself. And he has left you to destruction. May Allah protect us from our own evil selves. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وقدوتنا وقدوتنا وأسوتنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد brothers and sisters in Islam repentance to Allah سبحانه وتعالى is a door that leads you to nedim, to regret. Repentance leads you to nedim, regret for what you've done. Seeing your own destruction. Repentance opens you up to the door of an inkisar, feeling defeated in front of Allah without Allah helping you. That's repentance. That's the state of being that it must bring you to, brothers and sisters in Islam. Then it pushes you to the next stage of al-isti'ana billah, seeking the help of Allah against yourself. Oh Allah, please don't leave me to myself. Because I'm no good if you leave me to myself. That's repentance. Lacking of having repentance make you feel like you're right. Lacking repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Him not helping you return to Him in repentance, Make you disdain others when they advise you. Because Allah left you to yourself. Lacking in repentance to Allah, not being granted to success to repent to him from him, leads you to never ask his help against yourself, but help against the one who you think is your enemy. Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, who was known for his master ability to out-debate whoever he debated, you know, he never went to any debate to defeat the person. He always went with the attitude, hopefully I'll be shown my fault so I can fix them before I die. Or my wrong, or my misunderstanding. But he always wound up being the other way around. Like that. That's a person that's in a state of nadam, of regret, of inkisar, of feeling defeated in front of Allah, of needing the help of Allah to better go to Allah. So repentance is, is that essence. And then that repentance push you to draw nearer to him. To the best of your ability with good deeds and righteous acts. Repentance to Allah allows you to see the faults that's within yourself. Not in somebody else. Even if the other person is more wrong. You see where your faults is at. You don't see his faults. You see only your faults. And he's more wrong or she's more wrong than you. You see what you did that was wrong. Because guess what? You realize... You're on my kiyam when I'm barefooted, naked, and uncircumcised, and all my deeds in front of me. What he did wrong ain't going to benefit me at this point. So that humbles you. It makes you become an individual who sees the faults of himself, so he strives to fix himself. This is what pushed Umar ibn Khattab to make his famous statement. May Allah have mercy upon the person who offers to us our faults. Many of us, if somebody offered to us our faults, we had a problem how he offered it. You could have said it better, ya akhi. You didn't have to say it that way. You hurt my feelings. You ain't better than me, ya akhi. You sinned too. And I saw you do this. And I saw you do that. Not enough people told me what you said about me, so I know that ain't true. This is what we would say. Not a stop for you. Allah rectify my affairs. That's the deen of Islam. That's the Islam, the aqidah, this way it's supposed to bring each and every one of us. Offer me my fault, ya akhi. Don't be like the one who Allah Ta'ala says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهَ أَخَذَتْهُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْمِ don't be like the individual who when he's told to fear Allah, he's overwhelmed and seized by boastfulness and arrogance. 
a sin. Allah says sufficient for this person is the hellfire. Oh, what an evil ending that is. Who needs that man? But the one who feel like I've arrived because I did this service for the Muslims or this person or I achieved this in the dunya, he feel like he is above reproach. Where Umar ibn Khattab said, may Allah have mercy upon the one who offers to us as a gift our fault. Who don't want to be offered his faults early so he don't have to be offered then when he's barefoot, naked, and uncircumcised Yom Al-Qiyamah. When it's not going to benefit you when they offer it to you then. You can't repent. You can't make tawbah. You can't fix it. You just get the recompense for that action. Who wants that, man? Who wants that? So this is why the Salaf, Rahmatullahi Alayhim, approached affairs with this type of attitude, brothers and sisters in Islam. Seeing the faults of yourself Necessitate bashfulness and shyness in front of Allah. It necessitates being humi- humble and be front, be front in, the f- in front of your Lord. It produces fear of Allah in your life. In the hidden secrecy behind your eyes that no one sees but Allah. It produces it out of you. Looking at the faults of yourself. And it causes you to see the bounty of Allah that's upon you. Seeing that bounties that Allah has given you necessitates you to love him. Reflecting over those bounties necessitates you to love Allah. Reflecting over the bounties that Allah has bestowed upon you makes you be passionate and desirous to get more bounties from him through obedience. And you start living your life between fear and hope. You start living your life between those who call on their Lord out of fear of being punished for their shortcomings and out of passion and desire to get his jinnah, his contentment and pleasure. Like Allah described the Anbiya, the prophets and messengers. Or they called on Allah out of passionate love for Allah and fear from his chastisement. And they were those who was to us, khashi'een. We always translate that to mean humble. But I heard Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr in the text giving an explanation of this verse quoted from Kathir and others, saying this description of the prophets and messengers being khashi'een, humbled, it means they were people who constantly were persistent in calling on Allah and showing their need for him in their life. And constantly supplicating to him, asking him to help them and repenting to him. That's what the khushur, that the humility that they had in front of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the success of being upon the belief and creed of our righteous predecessors. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make beloved to us iman and make it adorning in our hearts. And doing righteous deeds and obedience. And we ask Him to make hateful to us sin. Transgression and rancor and renegating against one another and oppressing each other. Wa qima salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la.